I often hear the statement question, what happens to the people who don't get to hear the gospel because they are in some undiscovered area of the world? But doesn't the Lord answer this in Romans 10, 9, 18? Verse 18, he quotes, but I say to you, that surely they have never heard, have they? Indeed, they have. Their voices have gone out into all the earth and they're, oh, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. And let's go there. Matter of fact, let's go to Romans 10, all of it. Not all of it, but let's start in verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord, and by the way, this is clearly the Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. So you must be believing. So in the word, whoever is pas, ha pistuan. Remember we said earlier that a believer is identified as the one who is believing. The believing, present active participle. And as we see here, pas, ha pistuan. In him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches. Uh, verse 13, whoever or the one that's calling on the name of the Lord will be saved. So you must call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. But here it is, verse 14, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How then will they believe in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? Now, this applies to everybody. All of this applies to everybody. The person that, that's calling on him and believes on him will be saved. But we gotta keep in mind who Paul is, is bringing up in chapters nine, 10, and 11. Verse 15, how will they, and how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good tidings. Verse 16, look what he says. However, they did not all heed the good news. Question, who is the they that Paul is referring to? Who is, Paul says, however, they did not all heed the good news. Who could the they possibly be? that Paul is referring to. Well, remember, Paul in chapter 9, continuing in 10 and 11, Paul is, is bothered, upset, distressed about an issue concerning Israel. They're not believing anymore. When the Spirit first came, it fell on Jews first. Now Jews are not, not so much. There are some, and Paul brings this up, but there is a partial hardening over Israel. There's a spirit of stupor over Israel, okay? And that's going to be until the fullness of the Gentiles. So look what he says in verse, verse 16. However, they did not all heed the good news. That is the Jews. Why, why do we know that? He says, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Akoe, who has, who has believed our report? So faith comes from the, by the way, this is not a verb hearing. This is the noun, the report. Faith, has, faith comes from that report and the report by the word of God. And the reason why I say the report versus the hearing, because I don't want to confuse you, even though it says the hearing, it's not the verb hearing. It is the noun hearing, which refers to report, which is easier for, for us to understand. Look what he says, verse 18. This is the part that you brought up. But I say, surely they have never, I'm sorry, but sure, but I say, surely they have never heard, have they? And then what's the response? They, uh, indeed they have, they have heard. Their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But I say, surely Israel did not know, did they? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous by that which is not a nation. By a nation without understanding will I anger you. So his point here is about Israel. I understand what you did. You were thinking, of, well, what about the people in all the world? Surely they've heard too. This is not saying that all of the people all over the world have heard about the gospel. Now, it's becoming harder and harder to make that statement as we move further and further along. More and more people are going to hear the gospel. More and more folks are going to re reject it. What happens to a person who is somewhere where they haven't heard the gospel? They're in the, they're in the far reaches of the world, someplace out in fairytale land where they have simply not heard the gospel. You know, somewhere in California where they haven't heard the gospel or New York, or Washington, D.C., somewhere where the gospel has not reached. I'm kidding. But someplace where maybe they, they worship another God. Maybe they don't speak a language that we know. And no one has ever shared the gospel. They've never heard about it, Jesus. they never heard about needing to have uh, be repentant of sin and so forth, and that there's a debt owed to God. 
They never heard that. What happens to them when they die? Here is the honest to goodness answer. We don't know. All we do know is that you must place your faith in Christ for salvation. Now, here is where the controversy comes up. One, that's not fair. What do you mean? They didn't have they didn't have a chance. They didn't have an opportunity. Well, so the way this works is some people will start trying to trying to construct how this stuff works. For example, what about, I don't know, a baby? A baby doesn't have the opportunity to make a decision one way or the other. And then there are those that are going to believe that, hey, if this baby dies, God is going to sovereignly out of his love, bring them in because they just didn't know, didn't have the opportunity. Same thing with those that are severely or mentally handicapped. They don't have the ability to choose. They don't know their left from their right. There are people like, out there that are like that. What about them? Will God, will God save them as well? Does their soul matter? And so there are those that believe that, yeah, they'll be saved also. Okay. Well, do you apply that to people who also, just as though that they are older, they had no opportunity to say yes or no. And that's where people start saying, no, nah, I don't know about them. Well, it depends on what you think happened at the cross. If you think what Jesus did on the cross paid for original sin. In other words, that the and there are there are some that believe so and there's a good case to believe so that on the cross the debt prior was taken care of and that you did not inherit your father's or your forefather's sin. Though you may have inherited his nature or his propensity to sin, you didn't inherit the debt. The reason why that might come up for some people or believe that is because in Jeremiah, when when they're saying, and it's not just in Jeremiah also, it's also in Ezekiel as well, and other places where there's this proverb that said that the children's teeth are set on edge because the fathers ate sour grape. And because of that, what they're saying is that the children are dealing with the sins of their fathers. And then it goes on to say that no longer will that happen. So there are some that says that because of that, what he does on the cross means that everybody's sin is their own sin and their father's sin. So they're not, they're not imputed with sin anymore from Adam or from anyone else. But there are passages that seem to kind of negate that, that in Adam, all die because Adam sinned. So you've got passages that might seem to, if you have that tact or don't take that tact, there are some passages that we got to kind of wrestle with. And so what will God do with a person over in the backwoods of some place that we have no idea? They don't even know about us. We don't know about them. What does God do? Does he in turn, does he uh, give them some sort of special means of grace, some sort of dispensational? So as Tony Evans said, this trans dispensational, we don't know. This is him pontificating that this might happen, but there's no scripture to say so. But you know what the scripture also that there is no scripture that even brings up if a part, if there's no scripture that's, that, that, that lays it out just like we just laid it out. I believe you could also say that, hey, if that person's over there and never heard the gospel, you could also say that even if he heard the gospel, he still wouldn't have. Because who determines when you're born? God. Who determines where you're born? God. Who determines under what circumstances and what family and so forth that you are born? God. You all could have easily been born in Afghanistan, which by the way would suck. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm glad I'm not born in Afghanistan or living there. But how vastly different would your life be, maybe even your profession of faith, there versus here? Who determines where I'm born, when I'm born, and to whom I'm born to? God does that. He gives life and he takes life. And so someone can say, hey, they're over there. God knows what they will and what they won't do. So in the end, you can posit different hypotheses. You can. Ultimately, there's no hard and fast answer. I do know this, though. Uh, that you must place your faith in Christ. All of you here that are listening and everybody here in America and the UK and, and everywhere else that we know that that's civilized enough to know and heard the gospel, you have no excuse according to Paul. Paul says, you, oh man, have no excuse. And so I would personally treat, treat it as though everybody needs to hear the gospel, even children. So as often and as early as they can hear it, give the little child the gospel. Give the, the three-year-old, the two-year-old, the five-year-old, the six-year-old the gospel. The Bible doesn't say that you have to fully understand the gospel in order to be saved. You just have to believe the gospel. 
well, what about how Jesus exists to the four-year-old? Yeah, the, the four-year-old needs to understand how the Trinity works. He won't, she won't. The four-year-old needs to understand how the Holy Spirit works. He don't, he won't, she won't. So all I do know is that you grown folk who have the ability to think and understand, make sure you have understood it and then share the gospel with others.